Now, if you've got a fair idea about how the AND function and OR function works and what is the logic behind the result of true and false, let us take an example further, work with other logical functions as well. To begin with, I would like to map appropriate grades over here for each score given. Now, we have scores for 10 students. That would be the average scores. And based on the average scores, I would like to assign appropriate grades from here. Now in Excel, there are different ways of achieving this. But first, since we are focusing on the logical functions, let us test it out. But first, how do I come to know whether what is the grade for 72.5? Well, one easiest way would be to use the if function. That is, if 72.5 is less than 50, that means it's an F grade if, and then another if function, if it is less than 60, then E grade less than 70, D grade less than 80, C grade less than 90, B grade, and less than 100, then A grade. But if it is equal to 100, then it's an A plus grade. And that's quite interesting. But having multiple layers of if function is quite troublesome. So we have another good function called as ifs function. Now here we get to test multiple criteria at the same time and also get the appropriate results. So here in this case, I would check if 72 is less than 50. And now I'll log the row reference for 50 as I would be copying this formula down. If it is less than 50, that means it's an F grade. And also log the reference, row reference for the F grade. And then I would like to know if it is less than 60, then I call it as a D grade. So we have dollar sign again. It's not the D grade, it's an E grade. Now it's difficult to click on the E as this particular small box over here has occupied that part, that area screen space. So I'll click on D and then use the keyboard arrow keys. I press up and E grade is highlighted. Again, I log the row reference. Now I need to check if 72.5 is less than 70. I log the reference again, comma. If it is less than 70, then it must be a D grade. And then further, is this less than 80? Well, that's true. We can see that it is less than 80, comma. I want this to be under the C grade. Moving on, is this less than 90? If that's the case, then enter B. But if it is less than 100, then it is A grade. And finally, if this is equal to 100, then we need a A plus grade here. Close the bracket and that's it. Well, how did we get C grade over here? Because 72.5 is less than 80, then we get the C grade, but it is also less than 90, then why not the B grade? And why not A grade when it is less than 100 as well? It meets all the three criteria over here, that is, less than 100, then less than 90, and less than 80. But it took out the value or it executed the result for this particular test case, that is, less than 80. Why did this happen? Well, it goes in a sequential order. First, it checks whether this condition is true. If it is true, it will execute this and then exit out of this function. It will not bother whether any of these are true. So we could have had a problem if we would have selected like is C3 greater than or equal to zero. Well, it is true. So right at this point itself, it would have ended the function and we wouldn't have ever known whether the score was worth to be given a B grade or A grade or C grade. It would have just ended at the F grade or E grade. So we need to be careful when we are using greater than or less than or equal sign here. In this case, it's the less than and hence 
this case of fail did not match the e grade case did not match the d grade did not match but the c grade matched why because it's less than 80 and i'm sure very much so far that it is not less than 70 otherwise it would have executed any of the earlier conditions it did not happen so c is the answer and the moment it matches that it is less than 80 there is a first true criteria that it receives immediately it returns the result and exits the if function it does not bother to check further and that helps us select this down and see well in case if you want to randomly cross check take a look here craig nelson 59.5 e grade yes even if this were 59.99 you would still end up getting the E grade. Why? Because it is not 60. Now, when I say less than the number, let's say here in this case, it is less than 70. That means if this is false, that means the value is greater than or equal to 80. That is how it tests it. Now, this is something we achieved using the ifs function. And having multiple layers of if function would have been quite troublesome in this case. Now, moving on to another example here, we have detailed scores of each of these students, and that's for four subjects. Now, this time I would like to know whether the student has passed or failed. And we can determine that only when the student would have scored. 50 or more in each and every subject only then the student is considered to have passed using the if function would be troublesome here but then if i were to use ifs function and within the ifs function if i say is 77 greater than or equal to 50 and then i lock the reference i say pass and then is 65 greater than or equal to 50 and then again say pass and then counting greater than or equal to 50 and then call it pass so far let me just test this out over here okay you see overall the student has passed now so far we have just tested three subjects that is economic statistics and accounting so we only have marketing left. Let me also do that. Is 68 greater than or equal to 50? And mention it as pass. I would like to test this function if it is working proper. So let's say in accounting, I just give 40. Now 40 means fail. So that means uh, the student should be overall considered as failed. I hit enter and you see, the total scores change, everything changes, but this remains the same. What happened here? Let me undo the score. Yes. Let's revisit this function. Here I say, if 77 is greater than or equal to 50, then pass. Well, yes, that's true. It's greater than 50, which is true. Now, if function sees the moment you have the test condition which returns the result as true it immediately executes the task that you have assigned to it and exits this function so it no longer checks whether the student has passed or failed in other subjects so this approach of using the ifs function does not help so now we need to try a different way so i'll clear this and say ifs 77 is less than 50 and lock the cell then declare as fail then if 65 is less than 50 then lock that as then declare as fail if counting is less than 50 again lock the reference and declare as fail ensure that whatever text that you need pass or fail true or false right or wrong not true or false but right or wrong correct and correct all these are form of text and they have to be entered within double quotes next we have marketing less than 50 lock the reference and then 
declare as fail. Finally, close the bracket and take a look. Here it gives you the hash any error. Why? Well, let me tell you this function did its job. If I were to copy this and paste it here, it shows as fail. What exactly happened here? First it checks, is C10 less than 50? Yes. That means the student has failed and hence I don't need to bother about checking the rest of subjects. Overall, the student has failed and that's what it does. Now in this case over here, let's say for accounting, if I were to enter 40, it shows as fail. Why? Is C3 less than 50? No. Hence it tests the second condition. Is D3 less than 50? No. So third condition is 40 less than 50? Yes. Hence return as fail. But earlier, had it not been 40 but 80, which was the initial score, then it checks 77? It No. 66 or 65 less than 50? No. Is 80 less than 50? No. And what about 68? Is it less than 50? No. So that means none of these conditions are fit to be declared as fail. Hence, it should be passed. But how do we get the pass? We did not specify what if none of the four conditions are matched. Since Excel fails to identify or since we did not give any command to Excel to execute when none of these conditions match, Excel returns the hash NA error. Now, if this is a legitimate error, that means your function is appropriate and nothing can be done about it, then we do have some function called, we have the if error function, which we have already discussed in basic Excel. Well, likewise, we also have the if any function, if any, okay, I would encapsulate this function within the if any, let me show you how. I say if any, and we have this entire function here, the ifs function, and what if it is any, either I can say pass and close the bracket, we have this. Or maybe you do not want to see a pass or fail, just a blind, that should be fine. You will only get the list of students which have failed. That's two of them, but the rest of them are blank, okay? But I do not recommend depending on two set of functions at a time. What if I do not want to use two functions? I just want to use the ifs function and nothing else. How do I work with it? And I want to see the pass one as well. So here, under this, just as how we select first, we have a logical test and then the value if this test is true, logical test two and value two, logical test three and value for three, four and value four. Now, finally, I would want to say if none of the cases that, then it must be that the student has cleared in all the subjects. So I just entered true. That is for logical test five. Now, any of these logical tests, like I mentioned earlier, returns the result as true or false. So this time I'm directly entering true. And what if it is mentioned true? I say pass. Okay. Now on the way while testing each of these conditions, if any one of these return true, then automatically Excel will execute the value immediately next to it. That would be one of the fail. But if none of these are matching, then finally Excel will come here and see a true. So by default, it will assign us pass. I hit enter. It's a pass. Let's apply this function down and see. Well, we have this. It's so very straightforward. All we did was check through each of these. We know that this condition is not true, so it would have been false. It's false. This is also not true, hence this behind the scene what Excel would have done and return to ifs function is what I'm showing to you. This again would have been a false and then this finally would have been false. So the function that we had worked on, let me come out of this, it would have been something like this. First condition, it's false. So if false, then fail, false, nothing. Okay, if false, do nothing, false, nothing, because fail would be executed or displayed only when this was true. False, false, 
false and finally there is true so pass that's how it shows what if i did not want to show pass but exempted for example exempted see that's all to it so this is a different way or another way of how you can use the if function the ifs function and you get this let me just undo this to pass or fail and here we get this